what is up you guys welcome back to the channel so in today's video i'm going to show you guys how i did this crisscross rubber band frontal wig install i recorded this process from start to finish if you do not want to see this part of the video you can skip ahead to the install if you're just here for the install but we're just going to jump straight into the video so now i'm just parting out the baby hairs and i always always styled the hair before installing no matter what it is so if i'm doing your hair i'm going to ask you to drop the unit off not only to customize but i'm going to style it exactly how you want it so that once it's time to install all i gotta do is install i don't gotta go in and hot comb and like do all that other stuff it just makes the process so much easier So this is a 13 by 6 frontal wig. So you guys see there's a lot of parting space towards the middle. But at the sides, there's not really much space to work with. Which is why I did not add the rubber bands to the side. Because there was no room, as you can tell from the picture. So every time I part a section, I'm going to use the wax stick and the hot comb on the root. And that's just going to soften up the root of the hair if that makes sense. It just makes the hair more bendable, more flexible to work with. So I was going to edit this part out, the video, but I decided to leave it in, you guys. This was my first time doing the crisscross rubber band method, and I messed up. You guys are going to see in a sec. So now I'm about to do the crossover and you guys see how See, I'm trying to figure it out. You see? Okay, so I'm going to end up cutting the rubber band out. See that? Complete waste of time. Waste of time. And then tie it together. But in the next clip, you guys are going to see the video is going to flow smoothly. So I don't think I want to talk anymore until the install. So yeah. <laughs>
All right, now it's time for the install. If you have made it this far in the video without skipping ahead, you are a real one. But before I applied the stocking cap, I did clean the area where the wig is going to lay. I cleaned that part off, cleaned all the makeup off. I used makeup wipes and then I went over it with rubbing alcohol. You want to make sure that area is super clean um, so that the wig lays nicely of course and i'm going in with a bold hold active adhesive and i'm putting it before her hairline i'm not putting it right on her hairline so her edges is not coming off or all that it's before her hairline and i'm using the adhesive to secure the cap and then i'm just cutting the air tabs out you can't really see me cutting the air tabs on right now but when i do the other side you will see have a better um picture um so now with the air tab sometimes like it's hard to get that part to stick down so what i do i apply more adhesive to the side and then i use the back of my tail comb to kind of rub the adhesive in until it's dried and then that's how the cap stays down So while I'm waiting for the adhesive to dry clear, I'm going in with some makeup that's closest to her skin tone and I'm going to put it all throughout the cap and this is going to act as scalp. And for the back, I just tie it and then tuck it in. Some people sew it. It's really not a big deal. I'm just going to apply a little bit more makeup towards the front. And now I'm just measuring. <laughs> so now I'm just lining up the wig, making sure she's happy with where it's laying. But do you guys see how convenient it is to style the wig prior um to installing it just imagine installing doing a whole install and then having to style after and all that like this just works you know so now i'm just cutting the lace in three parts and i'm going to install this wig in sections So I'm starting off with the middle section and I'm applying small, small dots. You want to make sure you're applying small layers and you build your way up. You don't want to go in heavy handed because then it's going to take forever to dry clear. I'm going to smooth it out with the back of my tail comb, wait for it to dry clear, and then I'm gonna go in with a second layer, and I'm just gonna continue repeating the same step. I think I did this about three or four times. Y'all see that? It's clear, now I'm gonna go back in, all right. <laughs>
So once the last layer is dried clear, I'm going to take that middle piece and pull it forward. And I'm just gonna lay it right on top of the adhesive. Then I'm going to go in with the tail comb and I'm going to kind of push the lace into the glue. So now I'm just cutting the extra lace off. I didn't say this earlier, but this is not a HD lace. This is a transparent lace, which is completely fine. Usually before um, a transparent lace install, I would tint the lace or apply makeup to the lace, but I purposely left it like this just to show you guys the difference between HD lace and transparent lace because a lot of people don't know the difference. Um, the difference is with the HD lace, you don't have to tint the lace or anything like that. The lace just melts into your skin like butter. With the transparent lace, you would have to tint the lace or apply makeup, which is fine. The transparent can look so close to HD if you find the right um, tint to match your skin tone. And I'm going to show you guys that later on.
All right, so now I'm using foundation that matches her skin tone and I'm just putting it on the lace and as you can see, it's disappeared. The white um, transparent lace is no longer there. See, let's zoom in. It's like magic. So like I said, this process, I would usually do it before, but I just wanted to show you guys. Um, so that's why I did it last. That's pretty much it for this video, you guys this video was a long video so please so, oh this is us trying to get a tiktok in <laughs> so yeah so please like comment subscribe share this video and no i don't think you understand i'm obsessed